What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to install Prime OS on a desktop or a laptop. If you're not familiar with Prime OS, I recently did a video, I'll leave a link in the description, but basically it's Android x86 for your PC. Now this is really easy to install and if you've ever installed any kind of operating system, you shouldn't have any trouble following this tutorial. But in this video, I am not going to be doing any kind of dual boot because as soon as I start doing dual boot on this channel, people are going to start ruining their other operating system and then it's my fault. So I'm going to show you how to install this on a fresh drive or a used drive. I'm going to be using a 240 gigabyte SSD. Personally, I believe this is the best way to do it. Now it is possible to partition your drive with Windows on it and install this on that other partition but I'm not going to be covering that in this video because I just explained why. So personally, I've tested this on four different machines so far and I've had really good luck with it. First up is the bottom one here. This is a Lenovo M81 Think Center. It has an i5-2400 with four gigabytes of RAM. Then we have an Optiplex 3010 and I also tested it on an Optiplex 3020. Plus I tested it on this little laptop. This is a cheap Asus laptop you can get from Best Buy for 120 when it's on sale. They're usually like 140 bucks. Has an Intel N4000 with two gigabytes of RAM. I installed it to the internal drive. I wiped Windows completely and it actually worked really well on this laptop. But in this video, I'm gonna be installing it on one of these older Dell Optiplexes. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be using a 240 gigabyte SSD. These are real cheap on Amazon right now, about $31, you can get 120 for 20 bucks, or you can just use an old mechanical drive that came with one of these. There are a couple things you're gonna need. Obviously, you're gonna need a laptop or a PC that we're gonna install this on. We're also gonna be using a Windows machine to flash a USB drive. I'm going to be using a 64 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive to flash the image to and then I'm going to install it to an internal hard drive or SSD on one of these desktops. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and get Prime OS flashed to a USB drive. There is a link in the description to XDA. You'll bring you to this thread here. This is the Prime OS thread. We're going to scroll down. Make sure you read through this. There's lots of great information in here and you might need to know something and it is listed here. I'm going to show full post. Now we need to download the ISO. There's also an EXE, but I'm telling you 99% of people who are going to try to install with the EXE are going to run into issues. So we're going to be using the ISO. There's three versions. Please read this post before deciding if you have to install mainline or classic. I'm just going to open this up in a new tab. So from here, tells you all you need to know. For the mainline 64-bit, use this variant only if you have a CPU which was manufactured after the year 2014. Gives you some examples. Prime OS standard 64-bit, use this variant only if you have a CPU which was manufactured in or after 2011. And finally, classic. Use this variant if you have a CPU which was manufactured before year 2011. So it's really easy to tell when your CPU is manufactured. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be using an i5-2400, so I'm going to go to Google and just type in i5-2400. I'm going to try to find the Intel site, which is here. And if we look, launch date, Q1, so quarter one of 2011. That means that I'll have to use the standard version, the second version I showed you. Your CPU may be different, just make sure you follow along with this and check the date your CPU is manufactured. So from here, I'm going to go to Prime OS Standard, download the ISO. Click here to start download. It's going to bring us some mirrors up. Some of these are going to be much faster than others, so choose one that's kind of close to you. I'm going to go with DC. It's going to download here. It's one gig, so let this finish up. While this is downloading, we're going to need something to flash this to our USB drive. We're going to be using an application called Rufus. Now the link for this will be in the description as of making this video. It's version 3.4. Go ahead and download it here. I now have the ISO and Rufus downloaded. It's going to be in my downloads folder here. I'm going to start Rufus. And I've placed a USB drive into my PC. It's going to be listed here as device. This is a 64 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive. Make sure you choose the correct drive. We need to choose the ISO. We're going to click select, head to our downloads, 
and we're going to choose the ISO we downloaded. All we need to do now is click Start, write in ISO image mode, recommended, click OK, and OK. It's going to format all the data on that USB drive. So make sure you are flashing to your USB. Click OK. It's going to delete the partitions on the USB drive and flash that ISO. We're almost ready to install Prime OS on our PC. The USB is finished flashing. I'm now going to close Rufus. Now I need to move over to the PC I want to flash Prime OS to. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be using a fresh drive here. I do not deal with dual boot on this channel. You can search online for a tutorial on how to partition your hard drive with Windows on it. Then when we're going to install this, instead of installing to a fresh drive, install to that new partition that you just made. But for me, I'm using a fresh drive. I'm going to move over there now. Alright, so since I'm on a Dell machine, by pressing F12 when the unit is booting, it'll bring me to a section that looks like this. This is the boot menu section. In order to access the boot menu, you might have to do some research online to find the hotkey you need to press while your system is booting up. So I plugged in my USB to my Dell PC, and while the system was booting, I pressed F12. Most Dells will use F12 to enter this menu here, but if your PC is made by a different manufacturer, it could be a different hotkey. Some use F2, some use F12, some use Delete. You will have to do some research to find out how to get into the boot menu on your system. Now if we take a look here, we have Legacy Boot and UEFI Boot. You can try to boot from Legacy and you might not even see both of these options here, but for me, I have a UEFI BIOS, so I'm going to boot from the UEFI Boot section. I want to scroll down to UEFI and I flashed it to a SanDisk USB. It's plugged into the unit. I'm going to choose this option. From here, Advanced Options. We're now reading from the USB. Scroll down to Prime OS Auto Install to Specific Hard Disk. Press Enter. It's going to now boot from the USB drive, and we need to choose which drive we want to install Prime OS to. This is my hard disk that I'm using, the clean one. It's actually a 240 gigabyte SSD. I'm going to press Enter. Auto installation, yes. It's now going to write Prime OS to that hard disk or SSD, whatever you're using. So from here, I usually do reboot now because if you run Prime OS now, there is a chance that it's not going to work on next reboot. I'm going to go back to my boot menu and now we can boot from Prime OS. This is going to be the hard disk we just installed it to. Press Enter. And you can always set this up later in the BIOS to automatically boot from this hard disk. It's going to automatically boot in like 10 seconds, or you could just press enter. So I'm just going to go to proceed, put in some information here, and we'll be right at the desktop. So we now have Prime OS installed on our PC. I've already signed into Google Play here. You can just go through and download pretty much anything you want. You will run into a few games that just won't work on x86, but I've had really good luck with it. One of the main reasons a lot of people install this is for PUBG Mobile. You can play it for free here. And there is a built-in key mapper, so you can use a controller or keyboard. To enable Wi-Fi, just head over to Settings and turn your Wi-Fi on here. Same thing with Bluetooth. I'm just using a little adapter that I bought on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. It works fine with it, but it's only 2.4 gigahertz. Another little tip, if you ever want to update, we can head to settings. I'm just going to maximize this, scroll all the way down to about device, and we have system updates here. So we can check for updates right here, and it'll download the newest version if one's available. There's tons of Android apps. I did test out a few like Kodi. I tested Grand Theft Auto, Asphalt 9. Um, I did test PUBG. It actually works really well on this hardware. But go ahead, download whatever you want and see if it works with the system. If you really don't feel like installing Android to a hard drive, you can always use applications like Bluestacks inside of Windows. That'll allow you to run Android apps in Windows without any kind of installation to a hard drive. You will have to install the application, but it does work quite well. I wanted to show you one more thing before we get out of here. I'm just going to start this game here, and as you can see, it does go full screen. Some games will go full screen. Sometimes you have to make them go full screen. But if we press escape on the keyboard, it's not exiting the game. 
Just hover over at the very bottom here. You can right click and close. Makes it really easy to exit games and applications that way. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I really do appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If there's any other operating systems out there you want to install tutorial on, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.